This is KGW News at Noon. Possible relief from sky-high prices at the pump as President Biden asked Congress for a gas tax holiday. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. So if Congress okays this, you could be paying less per gallon this summer, but there are no guarantees, at least not yet. Here's what you need to know this afternoon. Today, President Biden asked Congress to suspend federal taxes on gas and diesel for the next three months. That would make gas 18 cents a gallon cheaper and diesel 24 cents less. The president is urging states to suspend their gas taxes too. This plan has skeptics on both sides of the aisle. Republicans say it's a political move, and Democrats admit it is good PR, but worry big oil companies won't pass along the savings to consumers. In the meantime, AAA reporting gas prices are going down even without federal help. The national average fell below $5 this week to $4.96. People are just driving less these days, which is driving down demand and prices. But that could change with the holiday travel over the 4th of July. Here in Oregon and Washington, on average, gas will cost you $5.53 a gallon. Okay, if you are heading out this afternoon, you are going to find plenty of sunshine and Rod, really pleasant temperatures. Yeah, and, and the sunshine, speaking of uh, downtown Portland specifically, but really much of the state, except for the example and the location I have behind me. Here's the uh, live camera from the Astoria column looking out over the Columbia River, the Marine Deck. Thought would break around noon, but that is showing no signs of breaking at this point, so it's tough to tell how much and when that will break up for you folks. In fact, if you go down to the Central Coast, uh, there's still some cloudiness, but we are now seeing some clearing. Here's Newport. You can see the blue skies up top from Yaquinta Bay. It's 59 degrees there. Okay, inland, we've had clouds up in Cowlitz County, a touch in Clark County. Here in Portland, I mean, that's about the most we've seen. So really, it looks like we're just going to keep the sunny conditions. And with that, the temperature is rising more so than I was expecting. It's currently 73. I've raised today's high from 76 up to 80 degrees now expected. It's a beautiful summer day, no doubt. 72 at 8 o'clock. Uh, Brenda, of course, will talk about the latest temperatures for that hot weekend coming up. Thank you, Rod. New this noon, the Vancouver homeowner arrested for shooting a suspected car prowler appeared in court this morning. This is Jacob Cantrell. He's facing assault charges. The judge set bail at $500,000 and Cantrell will be back in court on July 1st. Police say he caught a man breaking into his car, so he shot him. This happened around 2 o'clock Tuesday morning at Northeast 148th and Southeast 1st. Blair Best has reaction from people who live nearby. And there are like six to seven gunshots going off. And they were just bam, 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 bam. Julie Ingstrom lives next door. After hearing gunshots, she called 911. After living here all these years, this is the worst that's ever happened. Police say the homeowner, 33-year-old Jacob Cantrell, also called 911, reporting he had found a man breaking into his car with a shovel and shot him multiple times in the driveway. The victim is in the hospital in critical condition. Police haven't said exactly what happened during the altercation, but they did arrest Cantrell and charged him with assault. One of the bullets went through Ingstrom's RV. And you'll see that it came up here and hit this right here, right up the top here. It goes straight through here. No, so it's kind of surreal this morning. Yeah, it happened at the house right there. My Belinda Olive Beltron's family lives across the street. My granddaughter woke up. She heard the bullets and she was terrified. Bullets don't have no names. It's just, it's just horrible. There's lots of families in this neighborhood. I have children too, and I'm only two houses down. So it's a little unsettling to know that. Blair Best, KGW News. Also this noon, updates on two homicides in Portland, including the one in Southeast at Raymond Park. Officers were checking out reports of a shooting about 10 o'clock Monday night. By the time they reached the park, the victim had left in someone's car and later died. We talked to one woman who lives nearby. She says there was a big celebration in the park right before the shooting happened. It's just not a good thing and I don't, um, I don't like the reputation that it leaves the area. I don't want people to be scared to go to this park or any park in the city. I take it personally. 
The second homicide happened Monday near Northeast 81st and Siskiyou around 6 p.m. Officers found a body in the Roseway neighborhood and say the person did not die of natural causes. So far, no arrests in either case. A federal judge sentenced an Indiana man to 10 years in prison for committing crimes during Portland's protests two summers ago. Malik Muhammad pled guilty to 14 felony charges for tossing Molotov cocktails at police and vandalizing downtown businesses. During his hearing yesterday, Muhammad expressed remorse for his actions, saying he was off his medication for his bipolar disorder. A heads up for drivers, a two mile stretch of I-84 right near the I-205 interchange will close tonight so TriMet can start work on a new light rail bridge. The closures begin at 10 p.m. and end at 4 a.m. Thursday. Expect another closure during the same time Thursday into Friday morning and a full closure of that stretch Friday night through Monday morning. Well, the wait is finally over. Parents can now get their youngest kids vaccinated against COVID. Oregon hospitals and clinics are vaccinating kids as young as six months old. And that includes a doctor's office in Southeast Portland. Catherine Cook shows us how families lined up for their turn. At Selwood Medical Clinic, vaccines arrived at 9.30 Tuesday morning. At 9.45, they opened up their schedule, and by 10.30, they were booked for the whole week. It's clear a lot of parents are anxious to get their youngest kids vaccinated. You did it! Yay. That's it, you're done! Good job! In the blink of an eye, or maybe slightly longer. I'm gonna go one, two, three, poke. All done, sweetheart. Right. It's done. The first round of COVID vaccinations for children six months to five years old. It didn't feel like anything. High five! For parents, it feels like a lot. It's better to be safe. That's a long time coming, especially for the younger one. He did good. He Sarah Sayer well. brought her four-year-old son, Theo, really to get shy. vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> He's a little shy, but this shot could change a lot of things for him. Telling him that he can have some more playdates with his cousins, um, more playdates with his friends, a little bit more comfortably. I'm so proud of you. Dr. Monique Pritchard is Theo's pediatrician. This day felt special to her. Just a lot of excitement, um, making a lot of people happy today. While some parents still have concerns about vaccinating younger children, Dr. Pritchard hopes to put their minds at ease. It definitely is smart to get the vaccine because it lowers any serious complications from the virus. Clinical trials with kids in this age group looked really good, and so uh, we're not seeing the side effects um, that we've seen with some of the older kids. Yeah, that's <laughs> That's so cool. The Oregon Health Authority says this week the state will receive thousands of children's vaccine doses. They suggest using the state's vaccine finder tool to book an appointment or check with your child's pediatrician. It might get easier as more doses arrive. Yourself, as long as they're feeling good, you're good to go. Thank you so much. In Southeast Portland, Katherine Cook, KGW News. Kids in Washington also getting vaccinated. Seattle Children's Hospital received thousands of doses of the Pfizer and Moderna shots, although it only planned to vaccinate about 60 kids yesterday. A national survey back in April found only about a fifth of parents said they'd rush to get their younger kids vaccinated.